Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Machi Koro 2. This was sent to me by Pandasaurus Games and is designed by Masao Suganuma. Your favorite lovably quirky city is back at it again. Welcome to Machi Koro 2, where new adventures await, but the bakeries and business centers still abound. In Machi Koro 2, veteran players will notice some big changes. So yeah, this is the standalone sequel to Machi Koro, which many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, but let's just dig in on how to play and what the differences are. So in Machi Koto 2, much like the first game, you are trying to get the most money and trying to build these landmarks. At the beginning of the game, each player gets five coins, and then you go through initial building rounds, of which there are three. So in clockwise order, each player uh, can, on a round, buy a building. The cost of the buildings are right here on each card. So let's say player one goes, okay, I'm gonna spend, oops, I'm gonna spend three coins, buy a forest. And then they place that forest in front of them and now that forest is in their city. You don't have to buy any buildings, you can save your money, but let's say player one buys mm, a cafe and a convenience store as well. So this is their starting town. Each player will have their own unique starting town based on what they buy or don't buy. And whenever you buy cards, you always replace them with unique buildings. Now, on each player's turn, what you do is you roll the dice. Uh, and then all players can activate establishments that match the result, uh, and then they can build. The active player can build. So if I'm the active player, I can choose first off, should I, do I want to roll one or two dice? Let's say I decide to roll one, and this is my city. Okay, I roll the three. Uh, in this case, uh, none of my buildings activate. I'll explain how these buildings activate uh, in a second. But let's say I rolled a four. Uh, in that case, my green building here with the four would activate, I get three coins from the bank. So before we go into building, let's go into how these buildings activate. Green buildings can only activate on your turn. So if I wanted this convenience store to activate, I gotta roll a four. Blue cards can activate on anybody's turn. So even if it's my turn or anybody else, if they roll a five, you get two coins every time. Red cards activate on opponent's turns and they're usually pretty mean. So this card means anytime somebody else rolls a three, I get to take two coins from them. And finally, let me just pull one down here. Purple cards. Uh, also activate on your turn only, and they usually have special effects. In this case, the stadium, if I roll a seven on my turn, I take three coins from every opponent. So yeah, regardless of what I roll, let's say I, I roll the four. Uh, and then everyone else checks their buildings to see if they activate. And then after that, the active player can build. First off, uh, here's an important rule. If you have no coins when this step begins, you get one coin automatically. So you'll always have at least one coin to build with. Then you may build an establishment. So let's say I had three coins and I go, okay, I'm gonna look up here. I'm gonna look up here. I'm going to buy the shopping district. So the shopping district, if I roll an eight or nine on my turn, uh, I get from each opponent who has more than 10 coins, I take half rounded down. If you buy multiples of the same uh, building, they do stack. So. In this case, uh, you would take four coins from anybody who rolled a three. And of course, you don't have to build a building if you don't want to, but you can only build one per turn. Now, another type of building you can build is a landmark. And these landmarks are important because you need them to win the game. Um, so depending on which one you're building, for the first one, uh, this one would cost 12. If it's your second one, it costs 16. And if it's your third one, it costs 22. So for example, we got like the TV station here. Uh, take one coin from each opponent for each cup establishment they own, builder only. So these that's an immediate effect as soon as you build that station. Um, there are also ones that have ongoing effects like the forge. Uh, your sun establishments or gear, uh, we were talking about this, I think they're gears. Your gear establishments earn plus one coin Oh, they might be sun, because it's for the forest. Who fucking knows? Anyway, your sun establishments earn plus one coin income when activated. And this applies actually to all players, not just you. Like I said before, if you buy a building, you have to replace them from their respective decks. Um, if you ever uh, owe coins to an opponent but can't pay at all, you pay what you can and the remaining deficit is ignored. 
Also, if there's multiple transactions, like let's say for example, multiple players have a cafe, then it's, re it's resolved in reverse turn order. Uh, and so let's say you pay people and then you can't pay like the third person, that third person is out of luck. Otherwise, that's pretty much the game. You just are racing to build your three landmarks first. Once you build them, you win. Otherwise, on each player's turn, you just roll dice, uh, cards will activate, and people will get money. So let's just look at some examples of what some of these cards might look like. Here you got your sushi bar, you take three coins from the active player. Wheat field, if you, anyone rolls a one or a two, you get a one coin, and it can be anybody's turn. So I looked at this one already. Flower garden, just get two coins from the bank uh, on anybody's turn. Forest is very similar. A lot of these are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Furniture factory, get four coins from the bank for each sun establishment you own. Winery, uh, get three coins from the bank for each fruit establishment you own. And again, the symbols for those are on the top left of the cards. So a lot of these are pretty straightforward. Um, and then let's look at some of the other types of landmarks you can get. Loan office, you can only build this landmark when you are the only player with no landmarks. That's why it's 10 cost. And ongoing, reduce to build the cost of all landmarks by two. Not bad. Park, redistribute all players' coins as evenly as possible, making up any difference with the coins from the bank. That's as soon as you buy it, and that's a uh, kind of like a Bowser revolution, if you're familiar with Mario Party. Exhibit hall, instant effect when you build it. From each opponent who has more than 10 coins, you take half, rounded down. I'm not going to go through all the landmarks, because that's kind of part of the fun, is discovering what a lot of these do. But that gives you an example of just what some of these buildings are capable of doing. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Uh, roll dice, build buildings, and race to get those landmarks. And that's the game. So I have mixed feelings about this one, because I think it does add some improvements and interesting changes to the original game. But my problem with it is a lot of what you're seeing is the same stuff you've already seen in one, especially card-wise. Instead of feeling like this is an exciting, shiny new sequel, this just kind of feels like Machikoro 1.1. Let's dive into the good changes first, though. Even a rule as simple as you get a coin if you're bankrupt before building is a big fix for people who get fucked over by the red cards. Machikoro is a game where you can absolutely watch the rich just get richer, so I appreciate that they try to mitigate that a bit so that the people behind can have some kind of chance. I also do like the beginning part where you buy cards to form your own original city in the three initial phases. That's a great idea. It definitely adds to replay value and strategy, and the fact that you can now choose to roll one to two dice definitely makes the game more streamlined and faster, and I do kind of like that the rows are separated by 1 to 6 and 7 to 12, so you can kind of decide from the get-go which direction you want to develop in. You know, th these are nice changes to the interface. Um, it's also fun because very quickly, neither ch option becomes safe as people start snatching up the red cards in both categories. Because in the first game, it was a thing where uh, you could only build 7 to 12 or roll two dice after a certain point. But now that it's available from the get-go, it does make the game much faster. The new unique landmark system is also a big change that is interesting. Uh, I like that there are variable prices on them, uh, depending on how many you already have. I honestly don't like that some of the landmarks have powers that affect everyone. Not only is it hard for people to keep track of all these rules for everyone, since they don't have the cards in front of them, right? I'd much rather have a unique perk of like, I get this power because I bought it. Instead of everyone gets it and now we have to remember like, all these rules that start popping up for every player. I don't care about balance. Machi Koro is not about balance. It's about, you know, laughing at your friends' faces and getting money. So I want unique powers. It's easier to keep track of and less tedious. Yeah, uh, there's also an instant win card, which I'm never super fond of. Uh, because it's already so easy to get money quick in this game. You don't need to speed it up by adding one of those instant landmark wins. It's, uh, kind of a... I'm, whenever those cards are in a game, I always kind of roll my eyes. All in all, a lot of the changes here are meant to streamline the game and not make it drag. And I do appreciate that, because the original one can definitely drag. But, unfortunately, this still feels like a rehash, because so many of the cards are almost exactly the same as the original game. Uh, and that's not even including, you know, 
the cool cards that were added to the first game's expansions. Like, the the Machi Koro you can buy now has, like, all, I believe, all the expansions that were originally not with the base game. And those really improved the game a lot. This feels like we're going back to base Machi Koro 1, which was a okay game, but pretty vanilla. And this just feels like Machi Koro, like, had all the support and all these great cards added, and now it's like, okay, we're improving the rules, but you're going back to this. Uh, I think from the gate, what this needed was not just the updated rules, but tons of bold new cards instead of just, yep, that's the wheat field, that's the cafe, there's that, the forest, I know all these cards already. You know, I know what these are, I wish I was playing with the expansions. That's how I felt playing this. Um, now, if you are brand new to Machi Koro, you've never played any version of it, then this is a decent purchase, uh, because I do think the rule improvements make it better. But I don't know if I can personally recommend this over one, because one just has way more interesting cards. Like, we'll see. If Machi Koro 2 gets more expansions down the line, which it's definitely going to get, and, you know, maybe that'll, like, really make it feel more robust. But as it is right now, it's fine. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily play it over one. In fact, I would just take some of the rules from two and just adapt one with those rules. Uh, that's how I feel about it right now. Maybe expansions will change my mind, but right now as it is, it's fine.